Hey, what's up guys? Coach Mac, playfastfootball.blogspot.com. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about bootleg variations, uh, some different bootleg variations you can use uh, in your offense regardless of uh, what offense you use. I'm going to be talking about naked bootlegs today. Um, some people might call them naked waggles. Uh, but basically I'm going to be talking about it without a lead blocker out in front of the quarterback. All the ones we look at today will be naked with the quarterback out there um, by himself. Just a couple of things I want to touch on. Uh, I got my first book published, uh, my first ebook published through Kindle and Amazon. Uh, it's a book on split field coverages. It's a basic, simple uh, explanation of how we play our split field coverages to base formations, two by two, two by one, three by one. Uh, it talks about why we play split field coverages, goes through the rules of quarters coverage and two read coverage and our three by one coverages and, and uh, has some diagrams in there to kind of give you the the uh, different versions of what we might play to one side and what we could play to the other side. Um, it's basically just an introduction to split field coverages, what split field coverages are. Talked about them a lot on this blog. It's the base of what we do on defense. So uh, had some free time in the off season, and I've been working on it for a little while now. And, and uh, it was really more of a, of a goal of mine to figure out how to how to actually not only uh, write the book, but then to get the book. Uh, published as a as an ebook or in in, uh, in, in a Kindle um, ebook fashion. I don't have it out on Apple yet. The next process is I got to look into doing iBooks with videos, possibly. But uh, this is my first one. It's on it's on Amazon and Kindle. It's uh, Split Field Coverages by Thomas McPherson. So if you like the blog and you like what we do, check it out. Uh, hopefully in the future I'll be doing some more and and they'll be more involved as I get better at the process. This was my first one. Um, also, I partnered up with Speed Tracks. Uh, speed Tracks create speed stations that are used for speed and agility work, uh, where you have kids in resistance band exercises, where you have four kids working at a time and you're working on vertical jump, you're working on hip flexibility, hip mobility, you're working on uh, some upper body uh, mechanics on resistance bands like bench press, face pulls, uh, different oblique or abdominal exercises, and then you're working on a change of direction. Uh, where kids can sprint back pedal in a short area, they can shuffle shuffle in a short area. So uh, Speed Tracks is, is a system and a speed station is made to train um, four athletes at a time uh, and it, it's made basically to make your job a little bit easier when you're trying to train your athletes and you want to train some flexibility, mobility, and you want to train vertical jump and you want to do some different things. Speed Tracks has been, uh, I've been a Speed Track client for about five years now. We use it off and on throughout the year in our workouts and different stages of our workouts. Uh, I currently have two speed st uh, stations, so I can only get about eight of my guys in at a time. So while those eight guys are in, we got to have other coaches doing other drills. But there's a lot of different ways you can break it down. Uh, my goal would be to have probably you know five to six speed tracks where I could be working to, you know uh, somewhere between 20 to 24, 28 guys in a speed track system at a time, especially for my gym classes, uh, my PE classes when I'm when I'm uh, doing auxiliary days or I'm trying to do speed and agility work in a, in a 40 minute period or a 45 minute period in my gym class, speed track would be a great way to, um, to get some of that work done in a real quick fashion. Once the kids learn the exercise, they can in it, get in and out of the belts real quick. So um, I'm looking to, uh, to kind of expand upon how we use the speed track if I can purchase a few more, but I've also partnered up. You should start seeing eventually some speed track stuff on our blog. and. Uh, I'm going to be kind of uh, promoting their product throughout the throughout the future of our of our uh, of our existence on on our website. Okay, so today we're going to talk about bootleg variations. The first one I'm going to talk about is a three-step bootleg variation. All right, it's been, become real popular in the last couple of years. A lot of college teams are using it. Some high school teams use it. And basically, what it is is it's a three-step read bootleg package. All right, and what you do is you start off to whatever your call side is, you're going to have a hitch run by your number one receiver. All right, and the hitch is going to be thrown until the defense takes it away. If and when the defense takes it away, then you're going to progress into your bootleg. Okay, so if we were going to run the hitch to the number one receiver on the left, all right, we would run five step pitch by the number one receiver on the left. Okay, quarterback is going to punch one step. All right, so he's going to punch out one step right here. All right, our offensive line is going to attack the side that we call the hitch to, so we're going to go aggressively 
three-step aggressive gap protection, trying to get hands down. All right, slide, hips and shoulders square. We're not going to be passive in the set. We're going to be real aggressive. We're going to attack, try and get hands down. Our back is going to attack off the edge away. All right, and our back needs to make sure he understands that he works his helmet on the outside because really the back is there to secure, all right, he's there to secure the quarterback's waggle when the quarterback moves to, all right, the other side if he were to bootleg, all right, or waggle to the other side. If we punch one step, throw the hitch, as long as the back gets a body, even with his helmet outside, as long as he gets a body on the edge, we shouldn't have pressure on the quarterback. Normally when we're throwing quick game, the back is going to put his helmet on the inside hip and he's going to attack from there. When we're throwing a waggle, now we need the back to understand to have his helmet on the outside. So we set the protection to the side of the hitch, then we waggle away and the quarterback, uh, the running back, attacks the side that we're actually waggling to with his helmet outside. All right. So we start off with a hitch by the number one. We will take that hitch if the defense gives it to us all day and never ever progress to the bootleg or the waggle. Okay? But if the hitch is not there, we will build in routes, all right, to allow the quarterback to be successful on the waggle, all right. So what we will do to the side of the waggle, okay, and, and this is not how you have to run bootlegs or waggles. This is how we choose to run bootlegs and waggles, all right. There's a lot of different ways you can do it, all right. To the side that we are waggling or bootlegging to, we, do, we like to go, all right, 15 back to 12. All right, we like to run 15 back to 12 comeback with the number one receiver, okay? We're gonna take the number two receiver and we're gonna run a return route to the outside, all right? So we're gonna come inside hard towards the first apex, overhang outside backer, strong safety, whoever it may be. We're gonna stick a foot in the ground and we're gonna work out to the flat, all right? And we wanna make sure that we are no deeper than three yards, all right? So, with the, the original quarterback's action going left, and then sometimes if it's if it's a bootleg or a waggle coming off of a run fake, we want that number two receiver to be able to sell front side and then return back to the outside. All right, so we want to sell front side, return back to the outside. He should be no deeper than three yards. If we have a backside number two, we're going to run a drag, all right, or an over route, and that wants to work at about ten yards. Okay. Normally with your drags or your over routes, you probably got to go under the first back or over the second one. I just tell the guy running the drag, you get to that point as quickly as possible, avoid traffic with that first linebacker that is inside of you that might possibly reroute. You avoid him however you have to to get back on your landmark after that. All right? You don't want him, remember on bootlegs and waggles, you don't want him to be tending in because he's never going to get there. He's got to be climbing and working across the field and then he's got to end up at about a depth of 10 yards. I usually say under the first, over the second. If he has to go over the first, make sure when you get all right to 10 yards, you are working flat across the field so that if the quarterback were to waggle out, now we have some levels where we've got come back flat, all right, and then we've got the dragger working across. Okay, but again, we will always set up to throw the three-step hitch to that receiver that we declare to the side that we call, all right? If they give us the hitch, we will throw it and never ever run the bootleg or the waggle. The only time we ever bootleg or waggle is if, all right, if they take the hitch away. If they were to come up and play cover two, press man, they take the hitch away, we build the waggle in. So the quarterback is protected with a hitch, throw the hitch all day, build the waggle in. Great way, if, you know, in your quick game, if you love throwing the hitch, and you want to have an answer for when they take the hitch away, build a waggle into what you're doing. Give the quarterback a chance to say, I'm going to throw the hitch until they take it away. Looks like on film I should be able to throw it this week. Coach called a play and they took it away, build a waggle in. All right, it's kind of very similar to your to your you know your RPOs in a way or your you know your um, plays where built into the play you have an answer to take away what the defense has done to you. Okay? So you're building more answers that your quarterback can use on the fly without having to check out or route adjust or do anything different to say they took the hitch away and now we got to go to fade. Okay? So we like to build answers in for our quarterback so that because we're up tempo, if I call the play and I want to throw the hitch and they come out in press coverage, I don't want to adjust the play, I don't want to adjust the route. So we build the waggle in as an, as an answer to press coverage. Okay? If you wanted to do it out of three by one, 
All right, there's only one slight adjustment we make to do it out of three by one. All right, because of the spacing of where the receivers are, we try to keep all the rules the same. All right, there's only one wrinkle in three by one, and that wrinkle is gonna be by the number three receiver. All right, simply because he will get All right, the number three receiver will get on top of the comeback if you allow him to run a similar rep. If he was going to run drag from the backside, you would think about running him on some type of either 10-yard hook or 10-yard out route, all right, to keep his rule the same so that he ends up in the same spot on the field. And you can do that if you want to. You can just go ahead and make this a 10-yard sit route with him shuffling outside, and now he's in the same place he would have been, all right, if he was coming from the backside. That's an easy way to teach kids. When you run the waggle, hey, when you're when you're on the backside, you got to get there by dragging. When you're on the front side, you got to get there by running the 10-yard stop comeback. Uh, I'm sorry, it wouldn't be a comeback, but a 10-yard stop, 10-yard choice route, and then shuffle outside. We do something a little bit different, just to uh, just to kind of build in the threat of a possible home run and give us a little more clearance on that side. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. We're going to set the hitch up back here to the single. Okay, line's going to attack aggressively to the side of the hitch route. Back has the edge opposite with his helmet outside. Number one runs the comeback, 15 back to 12. Two runs the return route, attacking inside hard, returning back to the flat. All right, making sure that that is no deeper than three. That should be 15 to 12. And then what we do, all right, with the number three when we run this theory is we run an over-the-top corner route, okay? Give us kind of a home run ball, give us kind of a, of a vertical stretch down the field, see if we can get some of these guys out so that we can really put the onus on the comeback and the flat route. Really is more of a home run threat. It doesn't affect the coverage on the, on the comeback throw with a flat route, so you're really not clearing anything out. All right, we add in three by one, we add the corner route just to give us a home run throw or an over the top ball. Still going to start off looking at the hitch to the single. Still going to attack the, the offensive line. It's going to block the same way. Running back's going to have the edge away trying to get his helmet outside. Quarterback will punch one step. If he likes the single, he takes it. If he doesn't, all right, he naked bootlegs, waggles back to the trip side. And now we have our comeback, flat, post route over the top. All right, so that's a, that's a waggle bootleg off the quick game. All right, something you can do off the quick game, throwing a hitch route. All right, the next one we're going to talk about is waggling off a jet. Okay, we run a lot of jet sweep. All right, so you can build in waggles off the jet to attack away from the motion. All right, so a lot of our jet sweeps come out of this look where we have a sniffer instead of a tailback in and we use him as a lead blocker for the quarterback or for the jet sweep. All right, it's an up-tempo package for us that we use. All right, it's 10 personnel in theory, but it's really 20 personnel because that is a sniffer and your tailback, if he's a ball carrier, it's really, you know, it's 10 personnel on paper, but it becomes 20 personnel in a way because you got a fullback and the quarterback and, and a lot of spread. All right, when you have a mobile running quarterback, he essentially is a ball carrier. All right, so running it off the jet, we're going to try and keep all the rules the same for everybody. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our slot receiver here, motion in, and we're going to, and we're going to run the jet. All right, because we run a lot of quarterback power read and a lot of jet. So what we're going to do is we're going to end up waggling or bootlegging away from the jet. So the offensive line is actually going to sell one gap like we're trying to sell the jet sweep. And again, they will be extremely firm in their protection up front, selling the run game, all right, attacking to the side that we're running the jet to make it look like we're running jet. Again, a lot of our, our boots and waggles today are naked. So we're kind of hoping that we can somehow seal, get the backside, have a backside end that's chasing, all right. I'll show you one little adjustment you can make if you wanted to out of this. First one I'm going to show you is getting everybody into the route, hoping that we get the corner off of, off of the bootleg action. Your number one receiver to the, to the bootleg side is going to run the comeback. He's going to run it 15 back to 12. So that rule stays the same. Your number one receiver all right, to the play side is going to run the comeback. We don't have a number two receiver to the play side, so to try and get somebody in the flat, we've got to take somebody 
from the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our sniffer back and into the flat here, no deeper than three yards. That's going to give us our number two in the flat. Okay, so our sniffer is going to come back, all right, and he's going to be no deeper than three yards in the flat. The backside number two, just like in the other waggle, is going to run the over route, the drag route. So he's going to try and get under the first backer, over the second one, and he's going to try and drag at about 10 yards deep. All right, he's going to try and drag at about 10 yards deep. Okay, we have the added bonus of a fourth guy backside, which we didn't in the three-step waggle because one of our receivers was running a hitch. So with one of our receivers running a hitch, we only had three left. Okay, so with the backside fourth guy now, we can run a post or a stair route, however you feel you can get this guy open. All right, you can work him there, climb to the post, however you feel like you can get him open or get him involved to the front side. That's a route that you would probably only throw with a game plan adjustment or somebody from the booth up top sees that they rotate, all right, the way they rotate on bootlegs or waggles, all right, is, you know, that you may be able to get that throw. That's a throw that your quarterback would probably be fourth option all the time, and you've got to know or see something that you like to make you throw it, okay? Quarterback is going to fake the jet, all right? He's probably going to shuffle once with the jet here, all right? And then he is going to reverse out, turn his back to the line of scrimmage, and I'll explain why, all right? and he's going to bootleg and waggle, all right, back away from the jet sweep. A couple points to keep in mind. Whenever you're running power read with your quarterback, don't ever let him shuffle until he's meshed with the jet guy. So you can't take the snap and start working front side if the jet guy's not there yet. So he's got to be able to take the ball on the snap. He's got to mesh with the jet first. So ball, mesh. As soon as he feels the mesh, he can start the shuffle. So on the bootleg, what we're going to do is we're going to take the ball, mesh, shuffle, and then get into our boot. Tuck the ball down at our belt buckle secured with one hand by the hip, and we're going to boot. Now, notice I said we were going to turn our back to the line of scrimmage. A lot of shotgun teams, when they bootleg off of their fake, they like to open their quarterback up right into the bootleg, and the reason they say so is because they don't want the quarterback to turn his back to the line of scrimmage. Okay. Very logical point. I get it. I totally understand. I'm going to go back, all right, to two things from old school football underneath the center, all right, and when I coached quarterbacks in college as a GA for a year, one of the first things that I learned, two things from underneath the center, all right, that we're going to talk about that help on bootlegs and wipers. The first thing is, is you want depth away from the fake so that if there is any edge pressure, all right, your quarterback can buy time with depth so that he can get the ball to the flat or get, get it out of his hands. If a quarterback on a bootleg or a waggle is flat into the, the edge and there's a guy there that's unblocked or beats a block, your quarterback will never have time to do anything else with the football. All right. So when you open up into it, if you're a guy that chooses to out of the shotgun to open into your waggles, that's fine. You make sure off the fake when you open into it, you would better open with a ton of depth to buy time from that defender. Okay. So one of, the, one of the early things I learned, 1996 or 1995, coaching quarterbacks as a GA at St. John's University in New York, when you're under center and you carry out a play fake, if, if you're going to bootleg or waggle, after your play fake, you go three to the opposite goal line. Okay? And what that does is it creates depth and it buys you time off the backside edge. So we would always work our quarterbacks in drills on play fake, three to the opposite goal line before we ever go bootleg or waggle. Okay, now, we're not going to have the opportunity in the shotgun. We've already created depth in the shotgun. We don't have to go three to the opposite goal line. But what we are going to do is we are going to reverse out, all right? I am going to reverse out and turn my back to the line of scrimmage to run the wagon, okay? Now, when a lot of people look at that, they say, why would you want to do that or why would you turn your back? And my answer is, okay. Show me an NFL quarterback, or you show me an under center quarterback, run a waggle, and tell me what he does. So if I'm an under center quarterback, and I'm going to go waggle to the left with a play action to the right, I am going to open to the right to the play action, I'm going to present the play action, and then I'm going to waggle. When I open to the right to present the play action, where is my back? My back is to the line of scrimmage already. So if it's okay for a quarterback that's under the center, to turn his back to the line of scrimmage, all right, make a fake and waggle away, why can't a guy that's in the shotgun 
make a fake and turn his back and get into his wagon. All right? If I was under the center, I would have to turn my back to waggle. So why can't a guy in the shotgun turn his back to waggle? So that's the argument we make all the time. Once I present my fake here, I just become an under center quarterback, and that's where the under center quarterback would be after his fake on stretch or outside zone. So what's the problem with turning your back? Here, shuffle, ball on my hip, waggle out. Trying to get some depth so that if there is a defender on the edge, I can get the ball up and get it into the flat route. What we're hoping on here is with the sniffer aggressively going back at that end, we're hoping that that end doesn't want to get kicked out, and we're hoping that off the down block with the sniffer coming, he tries to wrong on. He tries to wrong on, the sniffer goes by him, now we got the ball out to the perimeter. If he is a heavy up the field guy, and, and, and he wants to get up the field, you may want to take this sniffer and just use him trying to log that end, lose the flat route, and just go come back drag. Okay? We try to get the sniffer out into the route first if we can. All right? Sell that defensive end like you're kicking him out. So attack him like you're kicking him out at the last second. Duck that shoulder. Rip on by him. See if you can get him, all right, to try and wrong arm your kick out block. By doing that, he's going to allow the quarterback to get outside him. Okay? So that would be a look at... A, a bootleg waggle variation off of jet sweep. Okay? I'll show you another one now so just so you can look at, you know, just so you can look at things from <coughs> different perspectives. Let's look at a bootleg from a flex bone formation. Alright, so let's go pistol. Alright, for now, since I'm a shotgun guy, let's go pistol. Double wing, flex bone, all right? Georgia Tech, Army, Navy. All right, let's go pistol, double wing. And let's look at... All right, let's look at running... Uh, let's look at run Ryan Waggle out of this set. We would do it off a rocket toss, so what we would do is we would bring a guy in hard motion Sell it like we wanted to run the rocket toss Y. Okay? Sell it like we wanted to run the rocket toss Y. All right? When we run the rocket toss, we do use this formation a little bit. Sometimes I like it as an up tempo formation because it still allows me to incorporate my veer and my option principles. All right? We will run this. All right? So it, it, it's something that we can build off of. All right? But it's another way to run a bootleg or a waggle if you wanted to, or just to show you another way to do it. Okay? Our line will step very similar to the, uh, to the jet sweep. We're going to make it look like we're trying to reach hard, aggressive, run block with low shoulder pads and low helmet. Try and make it look like we're giving that rocket toss. Okay? Trying to make it look like we're giving that rocket toss. When we run the rocket toss, we always put the tail back opposite anyways. Okay? So now off the rocket, the waggle is going to help us get the tail back into the route. Okay, it's going to help us get the tail back into the route. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go off the rocket toss. We're going to take the tail back to the edge. We're going to try and see if the tail back can chip the defensive end. All right, see if he can chip the defensive end and then get out into the flat at three yards. Okay, chip the defensive end, get out into the flat at three yards. All right, on the left, this receiver is the number one to the waggle, so he's going to run 15 to 12 comeback, okay? This wing away from the waggle side becomes the number two away, so he's going to run the over of the drag. So he's going to arc here like he's attacking to block the support player. Now, when he goes to, when he goes to run the drag or the over from here, he's really got to be aware of what that linebacker is doing because he's got to avoid contact. So we've got to be able to avoid over or under, whichever way, all right, depending on how fast this guy runs, you make sure you avoid him. If it's over, get to 10 and drag. If it's under, get over the next backer, get to 10 and drag. So depending on the reaction of that linebacker off the rocket toss, if that linebacker is a guy that on that rocket toss motion, all right, if that guy sees rocket toss reach and he really wants to run wide, you may have to go under him. But as soon as you go under him, you better get over the mic and into your drag. All right. If that guy sits in the box to where you can attack and get behind him, all right. if he sits in the box and you can attack and you can get behind that player, once you're behind that guy, now you can start to run the drag 
But remember, you don't want it to be 10 and in. You want to be at least working that way, all right, to get to the drag. Because if you go 10 and in, you're never going to get there, all right? Because of where you are at the wing and because the full flow rocket toss look action here, okay, because of that action right there, it's going to be a little bit cloudy of whether you go out, around, and over, or if you go under. I like it better when the Sam runs, where we go under the first, over the second, because I think it gets us into quarterback's vision quicker. When we have to go around that Sam, all right, I think we're late getting over there, and it becomes more of a dig look than a drag look, all right, and I want to get into that quarterback's window to the best of my ability, okay? We have a fourth receiver, so we have the luxury to run that chair or that post route to get him where we want him. All right, again, only going to be a throw that you use in a game plan situation, going to be a throw that you use um, if you see something. It's not going to be something you build into where you say to the quarterback, hey, we're reading. All right, that's four for us. All right, that's four for us all the time. It's normally going to be, you know, one, two, three if you get pulled up. This would be last, okay? So we normally would like to throw the comeback route to gain the most yardage on the play. If there's traffic or pressure in the quarterback's face, he knows he has to get up. So if, if I start to waggle and there's an end to my face right now, that flat route becomes number one. Okay? If I start to waggle and there's wide pressure that's going to pull me up, his drag's going to become number one. So when we start off, we go comeback, comeback, flat, drag, post. But then as you're teaching your quarterback, you've got to be able to understand that the defense may be able to do things to change that. Pressure in your face, ball to the flat right now. Wide end or wide blitz that gets you to turn, to pull up in the waggle. Once you pull up, right back to the drag right now, maybe the post. Okay? So now off the hard rocket toss, the quarterback would take this, he would fake the pitch on the rocket, and then he would get some. Now he's got to be able to get a little bit of depth after that. So he's going to take the pitch, fake, step, gain some depth, all right, and then waggle. Back, fake the pitch, waggle back to this side here, come back flat, drag, post. Okay, so off of a flex bone formation, off of a rocket toss look, all right, there is a there is a bootleg or a waggle um, that can that can help you slow some flow down if you're a rocket toss team, all right, if you're a flex bone team, or if you're just a team that's got some really good athletes and you want to put them in position to get the ball. This is a great formation because these wings now become pitch guys in the option. All right, they become rocket toss guys. You can run counter off of your rocket toss or off of these looks. You might even be able to run some jet to these guys. You might even be able to run maybe maybe jet counter with a, with a hand, double handoff where you go jet old fashioned wing tee Sally or Trev coming back with the double scissors handoff. All right, so even if you're not a flex ball team, if you've got some athletes that you really like, all right, and you've got if you've got three backs that you really, really like, you better find ways to get them to football. And this formation is a, is a simple way to get guys involved. For us, it builds right into what we do because we got veer option right away. We don't run a ton of midline, all right? So it's not like we can really come back to midline, but we've got veer option right away, rocket toss built in, counter off the rocket, all right? Three-step game. It just kind of fits into some of the things we do and we feel like we've got uh, we've got some backs that we want touches on the ball, and if we, you know, if we put them at wide out, we gotta protect it and throw it. And so, when anytime you have good backs, you want to kind of have some cheap and easy answers to know that they have it. If you run rocket toss, it's pretty safe to say this guy goes in motion full speed. I reverse out and toss it to him. That dude's got the ball. Okay, and that's what you want when you have good players. So now off of that, we want to be able to go waggle coming back. So there's a variation of a waggle off the rocket toss. Last one we're going to look at, all right, last one we're going to look at is waggle out of three back, okay, waggle out of three back. Three back for us sometimes becomes a short yardage goal line situation. We've got two different ways that we do it. I'm going to draw it up today out of our heaviest personnel, which is two fullbacks, all right, these are both fullback types, okay, so I'm going to draw it up out of two fullback types, and this is a heavy, heavy personnel for us where it's short yardage goal line. Okay, so Okay, so 
Because out of this set, there's a lot of inside run, a lot of blast power type looks, we're going to run the waggle off of those looks. Okay? So we're going to run the I'm going to draw the waggle up to the right. So to the right side now, we're going to have our number one receiver to the right is going to run the comeback. And he's going to run that comeback at 15 to 12. Okay? O line is going to O-line is going to now the O-line is going to attack away from the waggle to sell the run action away from the waggle. So our O-line now, if we're waggling right, they're going to go hard, one gap left. Hard, one gap left. Similar to the rocket, similar to the jet. We want the action to go away from the waggle. All right? We want all the action to look like it's going away from the waggle. Okay? We are going to take the tail back and we are going to run our blast fake inside. All right? We're going to run our blast fake inside. All right? We're going to take the front side fullback to the side of the waggle and he is going to seal the edge player. So he's going to get his helmet on the outside, not a kick out, this is a seal. Must have his helmet on the outside of the edge player to help buy time. Because we run nakeds and waggles, we're not going to have an escort for the quarterback. When we run our boots, they're naked. All right. So we really need to try and sell that edge. So anytime we can get an extra guy to seal, we love having a player to seal the edge. Okay. We're going to take the backside fullback behind the line of scrimmage after the snap, and he's going to go to the flat, to the bootleg side, so he's going to go away from his alignment behind the line, and he's going to get to the flat at three yards on the side of the way, no deeper than three yards. Okay? Great to bring him behind the line. All right, he gets lost back there a lot of times. If they're trying to read sniffers, all right, if they're trying to read sniffers, he goes all right, that side there, now they got to figure out what the other sniffer, both of them went that side, that might bring them to the plate. We have some other things we do where we try and change the reads of the sniffers up. If they're a man team in short yardage and now you've got guys playing man on guys behind the line of scrimmage, a lot of time that guy gets lost, okay? You'll see it college and the NFL a lot, they'll bring a guy in motion from one side to the other and then bring them back behind the line of scrimmage. See a lot of big plays in college in the NFL with bootlegs, with guys coming from behind the line of scrimmage because linebackers and underneath guys have a hard time seeing those guys with flow going one way and those guys sneaking out behind 290 and 300 pound linemen. It makes it real tough to see. So the opposite fullback goes, and this is, <coughs> excuse me, after the snap now, no motions or anything, ball snap, we're going to go behind the line and to the flat. Okay. Backside, we only have one receiver, so we got to use him on the over route. So normally, what we got to do here is we got to get a cut split. All right, we got to get a cut split here from that guy. All right, he doesn't run. Notice he doesn't run the post. Why doesn't he run the post? Because we don't have somebody to run the drag or the over with him, so he can't run the post. He only runs the post if he's number four in the route on the backside. Because he's number three, he's the guy that's got to run the over route. All right, so he's got to be at ten yards. All right, on the over route or the drag route. All right, cut split now because he's got to get there. All right, so when I drew it up the first time out of a normal split, you can see how, how tough that is. Cut split, get him down here so that he can get into the quarterback's vision, running the drag over the first, behind the second, avoid contact, get it to 10 yards to try and get into quarterback's vision. Quarterback is going to go blast left here, waggle bootleg out to the right. This will end up looking like old-fashioned under center mechanics. Pistol back behind me. I take the snap. I seat the ball. I open to my back. I keep the ball seated with one hand here. I hand fake. We use hand fakes because most of my quarterbacks don't have big enough hands to ball fake and then we lose it on the hip or we lose it in the exchange. All right. So we go ball here, hand fake here, three to the opposite goal line, and then I start my waggle. So this is a traditional under center waggle for me teaching the quarterback. I teach this as a traditional under center waggle, same way I taught college quarterbacks in 1996, all right, under center. We are going to open, seat the ball, and fake, three to the opposite goal line, and then start our bootleg and hope that we bought enough time from edge pressure. When we do get our head around and we start to attack downhill, all right, if there is pressure, we've got the flat route. If there's no pressure, now we have a chance to go come, <coughs> come back flat drag. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, that becomes more of a traditional teaching to your quarterback from under the center. Even though he's in the pistol, the footwork and, and the mechanics and the ball mechanics and everything become very similar to old-fashioned um, under center 
style mechanics. All right, so we just went through four different variations of bootlegs and waggles, all right, ways that you can use them in spread offenses, ways that you can use them off of three-step, ways that you can use it in the flex bone, and, and a waggle that you can use out of a three-back formation. All right, so bootlegs and waggles are great variations to move the pocket. They're great to change the launch point for your quarterback, all right? Don't have your quarterback constantly in the same launch point where the defense knows when they, when they start rushing the passer and blitzing the passer, they know his launch point so they can attack in their lanes where the launch point is. Bootlegs and waggles are a great way to change that launch point. Great misdirection, you usually want to run your bootlegs and your waggles off of full flow one way, bootleg waggle away from that. Great for misdirection, all right? Great to, to build in easy throws for a quarterback. Bootlegs and waggles are real good early in the game when you want a rhythm for your quarterback. Hopefully he can come out, all right? Hopefully he can come out and maybe hit that short flat throw and build some rhythm in, all right? You'll see a lot of guys open the game. Um, I believe two years ago when Alabama played Tennessee at Tennessee and it was Lane Kiffin's first time uh, back at Tennessee. It might even have been this year. I forget when it was, but they opened the game with Amari Cooper in motion behind the line of scrimmage, brought him back to the flat on the boot, and I think he went 70 or 80 yards catching the flat route on the boot. Great play early in games, great play to build confidence for your quarterback, all right, change the launch point, and generate some misdirection. All right, again, uh, uh, if you could check out the book that I got on Kindle and Amazon, it's uh, Split Field Coverages by Thomas McPherson. Also, I'll be working with Speed Track, so if you're looking for speed and agility equipment or you're looking for a way to train some guys in a quicker fashion while trying to do vertical jump stuff and something that's a little bit more economical than maybe the Vertimax is or some of the other things are, all right? Resistance training, working on hip flexors, working on mobility, working on change of direction, working on vertical jump, all right? Speed Tracks may be something for you to look at, all right? As always, guys, make sure trying to get your kids to eliminate thinking so that they can play fast. That's why in our bootleg routes, we never varied the routes except for three by one. It was always come back flat, drag, post. We never changed the routes of those guys so that we can get them to understand play side of the bootleg. You've got the comeback, number two, whoever it is, you've got the flat, all right, backside three or whoever that is, you've got the drag. Trying to keep it simple so that your guys can play fast, all right? That's the goal of everything we're doing. That's what we got to kind of keep in mind and try and remember. All right, so faster your kids can play, the better they can play. Faster you can play, the better you can attack a defense. All right, guys, as always, keep playing fast. I'll see you next time.